Are you a streaker, a worker, or a little of both? But then I sigh and wish a piece of a scripture tell them that God bids us do good for evil. And thus I clout my naked villa, uh, will uh, in me without old ends stole forth of holy right and seen a sign when I when most I play the devil. The 1970s were a pretty and embracing decade. Big hair, tight pants, disco, and the temporary phenomenon called streaking. It seems the like every time you turn on the news, someone had taken off their clothes and was running naked through public places. That's actually one of two common responses people show when sin is exposed in their life. Unable to hide it, some of us just fluent sin and run with it. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such a things they deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. But others of us try to hide sin behind good works. It's called self-righteousness, the counterfeit technique of self-focused behavior modification. Quit swearing, go to church, pay your taxes, be associated with the upright crowd. The goal of the worker is to look good on the outside, convincing others, self and hopefully God, that you are really okay on the inside, or at least that you are better than the streakers whose sin is so obvious, or maybe the streaker is just more honest than the worker. Anyway, Paul describes the fate of self-righteous people. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same thing. Neither the worker nor the streaker responds correctly to the re revelation of his sins because neither of them has the grace of God in mind. Whether you fluent your sin or try to hide it under good works is really not the issue. God's grace is. Jesus, check my heart today. Show me where I flu uh, fluent my sin. Show me where I am self-righteous. Replace these fleshly responses with a deep appreciation for all that you have done for me. And then live through me in a way that reflects your mercy, grace, and love for the world. Amen. You don't have to live in the for a shadow. Most of the shadows of this life are caused by standing in one's own shadow. Like any good movie, good God's unfolding story contains for a shadowing. The first for a shadow of His grace came right away in Genesis 3 part 15 when God told Satan, I will put em enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring of her and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the first hint 
of the gospel ever. This is a foreshadowing of the cross where Satan gives Satan a hard shot, but Christ crushes Satan in the end. Another foreshadowing uh, takes place when God took off Adam and Eve as a fig leaves and made some permanent skin garments to cover their nakedness. He had to kill an animal to do that. It's, it's the first physical death in the history of the world. God shadowed uh, that through the death of an innocent one, he will put a new garment on you. It is the theme we see throughout Bible. Take the words of Zachariah. Now Joshua was dressed in filth, uh, filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see I have taken away your sin and I will put the Germans on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Zachariah talking about more than clouds explains how God is going to do this. I am going to bring my servant the branch. See the storm I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes on that one stone, and I will engrave an inscription on it, say the Lord Almighty, and I will remove the sin of it, <coughs> this land in a single day. <coughs> wow, that's pretty clear, and the coolest part. You can experience today what he foreshadowed in the past. No more shadow needed. The light of Jesus has caught up with the foreshadow of prophecy and you can live in the brightness today. My Lord and my God, I praise you, Jesus, for who you are and what you have done you have taken off my field and clothed me with fine garments what can i do except lift empty hands in thanks and praise to you today amen god gone his sack a fact is like a sack it won't stand up if it is empty. Satan is good at a lot of things. For one, he is the ultimate gunny sucker. What is gunny sucking? It's pretty simple actually. When someone says something wrong or does something wrong to you, you don't say anything about the wound. You just take the offense, store it in a little sack, and go on as though nothing had happened. Then later, when you do something wrong and you are called on it, you pull out the painful events you have been storing up and use it to accuse your accuser. We usually do it to deflect responsibility when we feel exposed. I think we are all pretty good too at gun sucking, but Satan, he is the master. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan is standing at his right side to accuse him. He actually has a gunny sack for every single one of us. He will see you do something outside of what God has for you, and he will take that thing and throw 
it in your gunny sack. Then in a time of weakness, he will come after you and expose your naked guilt. Then all of a sudden, the accusations start coming fast and furiously. It all sounds true, of course, because it probably is, but it's not the fullest story. There's only one way to fight back. Get back in Satan's face with the truth. Therefore, there is no now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus is the one who redeems you from the naked shame of sin and you can celebrate that with all your heart when Satan tries to embarrass you, you don't gun sack others and don't take it when Satan tries it on you. Jesus, I praise you for what you did on the cross. I thank you that I am not condemned, that you continually forgive and that you have purified me. Thank you. Thank you for covering my nakedness with your righteousness. Amen. You are blessed to be blameless. Our righteousness is in Him and our hope depends upon the fullness of grace and love in Him and upon His obedience unto death. The best thing in life are free. That's great news to everyone who understands God's grace and walk in His Spirit. But what about those folk who are in Christ but still living under the law. That usually lands Christians into one of two categories. The self-righteous, those who think they must make themselves righteous in their own strength. They're not righteous enough. Those who, even though they are righteous in Christ, may mistakenly think and feel they are unrighteous as they carry guilt and feel com uh, condemned. Yeah, there is probably an element of one of these in each one of us isn't there. Daily, we must remind ourselves of the new way God makes for both the self-righteous and the not righteous enough. But now, apart from the law of righteousness of God has been made known, in which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the re redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Which way will you choose to see your righteousness today? Through the lens of the law leading to self-righteousness or shame or faith in what Christ did on the cross? Lamb of God, who takes away my sin, use my sense of self-righteousness and unrighteousness as a teacher today. today. Use it to lead me to your grace as the pure, free source of righteousness by faith and not by works. I celebrate what you have made me in you, righteous. I trust in you to live through me today in a way that makes this true a practical reality. Amen. Does it blow you away? The greatest enemy to human soul 
is the self-righteous spirit which makes makes men look to themselves for salvation. I have been studying this righteousness stuff for a long time. I am a professional Christian, right? I have made, I even have the big MD seminary degree, with, uh, me, which makes some people think I have a higher degree of righteousness. Then, why does the topic of righteousness still blow me away? Because rightly understood, our righteousness comes back to Jesus every time. But whatever virgin to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. God cannot simply declare you righteous if you are still wicked. He can just say you are righteous and you can make yourself righteous. He must first make you righteous before he can declare you so. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's Jesus all the way. He carried our sin to the cross. We were crucified with him there. He regenerated us and he now lives in us. We have become the righteousness of God in Jesus. Now each day we are learning to rest in his righteousness uh, in, in us and trust his spirit to live through us. That's the gospel, gospel and after all these years of studying and preaching and teaching, I it still blows me away. Holy Spirit, would you stir up the truth in me today? The truth about my righteousness is in your word. Today, make it real in my heart. When the lies of the world, my flesh and Satan remind me of who I would be apart from you, give me the boldness to proclaim who I truly am in you because of my faith in you, because of what you have made me to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Rags to righteousness. Ingor ignorance is not bliss. Bliss is ignorance of one's ignorance. Scripture tells us we can be radically transformed by renewing our minds according to what is true. That's important because there is a problem that only Christians can have. We often think we are clouded in sin when in fact we are truly dressed in the righteousness of God. I believe Satan will often try to convince you that you are still who you are you were before Christ changed you. A sure sign of this is the self-talk that sounds righteous but is actually based on a lie. Oh, I am such a sinner. Oh, how could God ever forgive me? You look at other people and think, Oh, they are so much closer to God than I am. Remember, the truth is that you could never get closer to God when He is in you already. 
when Joshua the high priest was standing before God and Satan was accusing him, Satan was pointing out his sinful, filthy rags. He probably said something like, God, look at this miserable slob. How, how could you love him? Joshua was listening to all this. How do you think he was feeling? You know what he was feeling, don't you? You know what it's like to have your sin pointed out. But that's when God steps in. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clouds. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and I will put fine garments on you. This is exactly what Jesus did to us the day we said yes to him. Take off your filthy rags. God has made you his righteousness. That's the truth. You can renew your mind and be transformed. How? By refusing the lies of Satan and embracing who Jesus made you into. What happened to Satan's accusations when the robes of righteousness were placed on Joshua? Satan went mute. Satan has nothing to say when you, we stand in the righteousness of Christ. Jesus, I ask that your truth would break through me, my feelings, my experiences, and the lies of Satan and the world that continually remind me of my sins. Thank you for taking away my sin. Thank you for putting the fine garments of righteousness around me. Thank you for what you did on the cross, my Lord. Amen. Don't be led astray. Vulnerable faith is. Even if you committed your life to Jesus decades ago, Without a steady diet of knowing Christ, you may be vulnerable in your faith and easily led astray. The book of Hebrews teaches us about what is at the risk when we fail to continually deepen our understanding of the fullness of who Christ is. Jesus is our unshakable hope. Even though the upcoming holiday season will likely look different this year, we know that our Lord walks with us and He is the hope for our weary hearts. Christmas 2020 can be even more poignant than in years past when we keep our focus on Christ. You can still experience true joy this wonderful season. The holiday season will certainly be different this year, but it could be filled with even greater joy. We will likely have more time to be still and quiet our hearts as we focus on the one we are celebrating and the reason our weary souls can rejoice. We would like to show you how with Stuart and Jill uh, Berisco's advent uh, devotional book Meet Him at the Manger and Jill's accompanying audio on USB as thank for your gift today. These resources will help you focus even more on the one we are celebrating and the reason, uh, reason you weary souls can rejoice even in these tough times. Standing firm in your righteousness. Dad, are you naked under all those clouds? Seven years old Josh to his dad. Satan is smart and very tricky. If he can get you asking the wrong question, 
you will never come up with the right answer if you are a christian the wrong question is how do i make myself righteous but this is the question satan loves for you to ask because it distracts you from a fundamental command of god that can seriously protect you from the lies of satan in many areas stand firm there with the breastplate of righteousness in place please note this passage doesn't say to go out and find the bread plate of righteousness he doesn't say to go out and create a bread uh, plate of righteousness if you build your own armor it's going to be flawed and weak you will always have to make sure you are uh, doing enough to be protected enough to be righteous enough to just uh, justify yourself on top of being extremely exhausting that's way out of sync with the way it is suppo- uh, supposed to be god wants you to, uh, to start firm in the breastplate of righteousness he has made for you your job is to put your trust in what he has done christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteous for everyone who believes the breastplate covers the whole chest and ab- abdomen it covers all the vital organs the things that keep you alive you have this righteousness in uh, in christ know it and stand firm in this truth you have nothing to hide from the father and satan can no longer use your guilt to manipulate you in the upper room jesus said satan has no hold on me satan had no hold on him because he was completely righteous you shared in his crucifixion and resurrection everything that he he won you won too which means satan has no hold on you either that's the truth the best he can do is to deceive you from the truth and getting you to ask the wrong question how will you answer abba father i refuse the fleshly instincts to try to make myself righteous i see satan's attempt to distract me with the wrong question i look to you and you only as the answer and the source of my righteousness by the power of your spirit in me give me the wisdom to stand firm in the breast breastplate you have provided and made for me already amen